On the evening of August 16, 1991, in Altoona, Pennsylvania, 15-year-old Dwayne Della was babysitting his two-year-old niece, Melissa. Me and Melissa are watching TV, and then um, I walked into the kitchen to get some ice cream. I opened the freezer door. I reached into the back. Then, like, I sort of stuck my tongue out, and it got stuck. By accident. I tried, like, breathing hot air on trying to melt the ice, but it didn't work. And then I tried using my fingernails to, like, chip the ice away, but that didn't work either. I told Melissa to get me the phone. The watch commander at the police station, Sergeant John Carnicella, was not a dispatcher, but he happened to be passing by as the call came in. in serious trouble. I thought it was a female that was being beat up or be stabbed or even worse. My first inclination was get the call traced to get help to the person. What's your address? I told the corporal that we had a domestic situation that he should start to roll on the call and I would give him the address once I got it. It wasn't painful, it was just frustrating because um, I kept trying to tell him the address, then he couldn't hear what I was saying, and he didn't know what was wrong with me. the 911 trace was completed and I asked the person if that was the address that they were at. The address was passed to Corporal Jeffrey Auker. When officers respond to domestic calls, generally they're considered the most dangerous calls that we can respond to. You never know what waits behind the door when you answer a domestic call. Okay, we have the police on the way. Do you need an ambulance? Now we knew where the person was, we needed to know what their problem was. We're going possibly into a uh, hostile environment. We could be going into a situation where there could be weapon play. What's the problem? I, my car is stuck to the freezer. Your toe is stuck to the freezer. No, tongue, Your tongue is stuck in the no, freezer. No. Well, how old are you? 15. You're 15. Uh -huh. and, and what's your problem now exactly? Now you can talk I can't talk. I know you can't talk. Your tongue is stuck to the freezer. Your tongue is stuck to the freezer. Well, it was a sort of a revelation to me. I thought, boy, this was a crazy call. I'll to the police. Scott Cayley was the first officer on the scene. I'll to the police. I didn't get any response, so I walked down off the stoop and I went around to a first story window and looked inside. I really didn't know what to think at that point. And the little girl came over at that point because she heard me jiggling the doorknob and she tried to unlock the door. That's good. Unlock it, honey. Try and unlock it. Come on now. Officer Gerald McCauley was the next to arrive. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Corporal Ocker soon joined the other officers trying to get in. We decided to enter from the rear, but these are uh, adjoining row houses and there's no entry to the backyard. So myself and Officer McCauley went next door and ran through the house. And we came around the corner and there's a kid with his face frozen to the freezer like a moon pot. And there was a mass of frozen blood and his tongue was stuck to that. It's not something that you're taught at the academy or that's in the first aid manuals. So we did what we thought was right and began getting glasses of warm water from the tap and pouring them over the boy's tongue and mouth. At which point the young man said, with his tongue stuck there, that's hot water. 
It was like a circus. We went from where we thought we were going to be going into a violent domestic call. We went in there and broke the doors down and did damage to the house to get in. And the only way we can figure to help them out is to throw water on them. And we practically drown them trying to rescue them. When paramedic Jim Effinger and his partner arrived, they determined the extent of Dwayne's injury. Watch your mouth. Now, once you relax, and we took the towel from him and inspected the tongue. And basically what we saw was just a small reddened area with a small cut on the tongue, about a quarter of an inch. I just want to take the pulse. Dwayne was a lucky kid. He could have lost his tongue from severe frostbite. He wouldn't be able to talk, would not be able to swallow. Uh, he couldn't chew his food properly, so that would have been a real tragedy. The toughest part was um, waiting for the police to come because I didn't ever think I was going to get my tongue off the freezer. I could move around a little bit, but I couldn't like move real far um, because like tongue's not that long. <laughs> The city of Altoona made two-year-old Melissa Garvin an honorary police officer in recognition of the crucial assistance she gave her uncle that night. I think Melissa is a real hero. If she hadn't picked up that phone and handed it to him, he couldn't have made that phone call. We couldn't have traced it. And, you know, the neighbors didn't know what was going on because he wasn't yelling loud enough because his tongue was frozen. When I'm older, I'll probably think about this and laugh because it doesn't happen to that many people. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's never to stick your tongue out when you're reaching into the freezer. Aww.